Over the past six weeks, we have heard over and over about the care and compassion of the Good Shepherd. The diligent effort of the shepherd is the reason for the welfare of the sheep. Now, this wonderful benefit, this incredible blessing, is summed up in our verse today, in the last verse from Psalm 23, which reads, Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Well, I've been meeting with nine young members of Lee Street via Zoom, which is an online sort of way to chat and meet together, preparing them to make profession of faith in the weeks ahead. About four weeks ago, I asked them if they were reading their Bible. And to be honest, most of them, sorry, that sheep was about ready to lick the screen there. Most of them were honest with me and said, no, they didn't read it all that much. Which did not surprise me, since in middle school and early high school, I didn't read my Bible very much either. Well, what I did was, I assigned them, and Nate Rika and myself as well, to read the Gospel of Mark over a period of about four to five weeks. And then we were to report each week on Wednesday when we would meet, what was our favorite story? And why did we pick that as our favorite? It was interesting to hear the students' choices, and I appreciated them telling me which story was the best and why they picked it. For our last meeting, which was this past week, I chose the story from Matthew 8, or excuse me, Mark 8, when Jesus asked his disciples the simple question, who do people say that I am? Well, the disciples had answered him, well, some say you're Elijah, some say you're John the Baptist or one of the prophets. But then Jesus turned the question very personal to them. And he said, who do you say that I am? And of course, Peter immediately blurts out, you are the Christ. And in Matthew's version of the story, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. Then I told the students the reason why I chose that. And the reason is because that was one of Peter's professions of faith. And the same question could be asked of them. Audrey, Bella, Dylan, Kenzie, Lexi, McKenna, and Natalie. Who do you say that Jesus is? Well, the same question could be asked of you, or me, anyone who follows Jesus. Who do you say that he is? <laughs> well, there are many answers that fit the bill. He's the Savior, he's Lord, he's our friend, he's our master, he's the light, he's a teacher. And after six weeks walking through Psalm 23, of course, we would call him our shepherd as well. Well, Peter's profession of faith in the Gospel of Mark is short and sweet. I challenge you to tape the first question and answer of the catechism onto your bathroom mirrors so that you could memorize that in the weeks early in the pandemic. Little did I know that we were going to be still worshiping like this some eight to ten weeks later. We could have had the first dozen questions and answers memorized from the catechism by now. Well, the first question and answer of the catechism is a statement of faith. And so is Psalm 23. My NIV Bible calls it David's profession of joyful trust in the Lord as the Good Shepherd King. Well, verse 6, our verse for today, is a, is a wonderful way to end a profession of faith statement. That statement that we find all through Psalm 23. An exclamation of confidence in the one that we follow. A confidence or 
a surety that every aspect of our lives under the, is under the control of the expert shepherd. Now, most Christians can jump on board with this profession of faith in verse 6 when things are going very well. I mean, when our health is excellent, when our finances are secure, when our kids are safe, our careers are flourishing, and when the friendships are many. However, when our bodies break down, when our jobs disappear, our kids constantly misbehave, our parents drink too much or our dreams dissolve, what then? Can we honestly say the words, surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever? Well, there have been multiple times in my life when I have thought these words to be more Pollyannish than scriptural. However, that's not God's problem, that's my problem. Sometimes it takes months or years to find the goodness and love in God's plan for our lives. However, if you and I would take the time to retrace our steps of all the days of our lives, I think we would find David's statement of faith to be true. The ending of Psalm 23 with a mention of his goodness and love reminds me of the words in Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. And before I read them, I want you to remember the context of Jeremiah's profession of faith. Of course, the title of the book is Lamentations. The book has five laments. You know what a lament is, right? It's a dirge, it's a wailing, it's a complaint, a crying, an expression of grief. It's exactly what most of us have been doing for the past two months. But it's not how the story ends for Jeremiah or for us. After two and a half chapters of lament and lamentations, Jeremiah says, yet, that's like the word but, or however, it's where the, it, it's where the, the pivot swings, the story changes. Yet, this I call to mind, and therefore I have hope. Because of the Lord's great love, we are not consumed for his compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness. We are tired of the new life that has been forced upon us. We have been locked up for our own safety and for the safety of others. We have used more sanitizer in the past two months than we've used in the past five years. There's been a shortage of toilet paper, a shortage of sanitizers, gloves, and masks. Into all that and into our laments, God speaks with this timely music, words, and artwork.
that you could see it all made new? Do you wish a man named George Floyd in Minneapolis was alive today? Do you wish the protests, the violence, and the looting in Minnesota would stop? Do you wish that the feuding between Republicans and Democrats would cease? Do you wish the, the flooding would dry up in Midland and maybe even in your backyard? Do you wish the name calling, the bullying, the racism, persecution in the world would stop? But we do. The Lion of Judah, better known as Jesus Christ, has conquered the grave. He is David's root indeed and the Lamb who died to ransom slaves like us. Is he worthy? Is he worthy of all blessing and honor and glory? Is he worthy of this? He is. So how is it that sheep like us are to live this message of hope? How do we live knowing that the Lamb of God has come to restore the broken, has come to cast light into darkness and shadows? How do we live in a creation that is lamenting and groaning? Well, if you profession of faith students are listening this morning, you could tell us how to live with the Lamb of God's good news. Are you there, students? The answer, of course, is the active part of our catechism that we talked about in class. It's what we do after we hear the good news that we are saved by grace and after we accept it, too. To bring true blessing and honor and glory to Jesus, we choose to live a life of gratitude, a life of service, for the gift of the cross on which he gave his life. In John 10, verse 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his life for his sheep. So Jesus left behind a life worth modeling. He left behind a path worth following. He left behind a peace worth performing pursuing, and a love worth living. In Isaiah 52, verse 7, we read, How beautiful on the mountains are the feet of those who bring good news, who proclaim peace, who bring good tidings, who proclaim salvation, who say to Zion, Your God reigns. So in the midst of chaos in the world and in our country, in our state, and in our communities, and even in our families. What are we leaving behind on the way, the truth, and the life that Jesus modeled for us? In his book, A Shepherd Looks at Psalm 23, Philip Keller talks about what sheep leave behind as they move from pasture to pasture. He says, when the good shepherd leads them, 
they leave behind goodness and mercy by fertilizing the soil and stripping it of all the weeds that they eat and leaving only beauty and abundance behind for those who come after them. So my question to you this morning is simply, is that what you're leaving behind for the next generation? Do we leave behind a blessing or are we a bane to others? Are we leaving behind peace or turmoil, forgiveness or bitterness, contentment or conflict, living a life of gratitude for the grace we guilty need so much is a witness to the world. The Church of Jesus Christ has the answers to all of the chaos in the world, all of the problems that we see. The Church is indeed the calm in the chaos. It's the light for the lost, and it's the faith for the fearful. And I am grateful that I serve a congregation that has been led by the Good Shepherd, Jesus Christ. I am thankful that Jesus gave me the interim shepherd's job, that role for a time of 21 years. As we wait for his return, may goodness and love follow us all the days of our lives, and may we dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. I want to leave you with this new version of Psalm 23. Some of you may have heard it before, which speaks to the goodness and love of God. <clears throat> the Lord is my shepherd. That's relationship. I shall not be in want. That's supply. He makes me lie down in green pastures. That's rest. He leads me beside quiet waters. That's refreshment. He restores my soul. That's healing. He leads me in paths of righteousness. That's guidance. For his name's sake, that's purpose. And even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, that's testing. I will fear no evil, that's protection. For you are with me, ah, that's faithfulness. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. That's discipline. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. That's hope. You anoint my head with oil. That's consecration. My cup overflows. That's abundance. Surely goodness and love will follow me all the days of my life. That's blessing. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord, that's security, forever, that's eternity. My friends, may God bless you and keep you on this day and every day. Amen.